<laughs> you got it rolling now. Now you can't stop it. It's a train running out of control. <laughs> now, cyberbullying right now, it's not necessarily a crime. But like you see right there, it does affect people very badly. Um, and I know most girls are really catty because I've been a girl for 41 years, so I know. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but that's what some people do use the sites for. I don't get terribly involved in cyberbullying because there's really not a criminal nexus to it just yet. If you go so far as to make a threat to kill someone or something like that, then we would get involved. That's still somewhat of a misdemeanor. If it's not a felony, the state police isn't going to get involved. Um, I have, if I've gotten cyberbullying cases, let the school know that, you know, this is what's going on and, you know, to ask them to take care of it. There's really nothing much I can do about it. However, you still need to report it. It still needs to be known that this is what's going on. Um, we can use whatever usernames to vet them through our national database, see if they're doing more than just cyberbullying. Um, well, go ahead. I was going to say something. Also, the data shows so far that girls are a lot more affected by cyberbullying than boys are because they take it a lot more seriously. And there's like a wraparound effect of what is put on, you know, the internet. Somebody says about you on the internet, then you go back to school, you deal with it at school, then you come home, and it's kind of just like a snowball. It gets bigger and bigger. Because a lot of times boys are able to kind of joke around, see it as a joke, where girls, you know, we take it personally. <laughs> you know, you put on there something, so-and-so, so-and-so, this, oh, you're not my friend anymore. So that's just something that, you know, you ought to take into account and think about what you put on, you know, when you're mad at someone. You may not necessarily want to go to Facebook and say, oh, Jay had pissed me off today. You know, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want to put that on there because the next thing you know, Jay is like, well, you put that on there and everybody knows now. So. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's. and we know that it has led to two girls committing suicide and guys committing suicide. And, you know, you don't want to be involved in something that, that really leads to a kid feeling so bad about themselves that they can't live anymore and that they'll hang themselves. Um, yes, we don't want to post uh, your cell phone number online. We've talked about that. No nude pictures on your cell phone because somebody, all they have to do is hit forward. You know that. And then it can go to everyone in their, in their list. Um, party pictures. You're underage and you're drinking. You could get charged. So if all this wraps up in a big case, we can charge you with that too if we want to. Yeah. So can the, the um, prosecutor. And things about saying awful things about your job and your boss and everything like that. That will come back to you. We will consider that when we do background checks. So I, I would suppose everyone else would. Um, you, sexual messages, cell phone numbers, you know, fight videos. I don't see many of those, but <laughs> but anything that you don't want to be sent out into public. I mean, and we know we all have smartphones. They're exactly like our computers, and we can do anything on these phones that we can do on our computers. And when we do confiscate things, we'll confiscate your phone as well. So that will be something else that goes if you get involved in one of these cases. Um, there's your video. And that, I mean, in the deep, dark annals of what I do, that does really happen. We have um, a girl that went on America's Most Wanted to find the people that were posting her stuff over and over. And it was under a different name, but these men that collect her pictures um, finally found out exactly who she was, where she lived, and what her real name is. And she would get harassed on the street. And people knew who she was. And the pictures that were posted about her, she was a child. And they were very bad, bad, bad pictures of her. And now she has to deal, she's only 22 or something, early 20s. And now every time she says she goes out into public, she wonders who's seen those pictures of me. 
every single day. So, there, is this another one? <laughs> You've got that ball present. rolling, don't you? But actually, what we can do is this. Okay. <laughs> so, do y'all have any other questions about anything? Do y'all? All right, well, I guess I'm done. We'll let Nikisha do hers. You can yeah, put it in a slideshow. Okay, there we go. Okay. Well, my name is Nakisha McGee, and like Lenore said, we worked together for about six years. Way years. Yeah, way too many years at, at State Police in CA City. And just like Lenore, I have a degree in criminal justice. I graduated from Arkansas State University. And after I graduated from college, I immediately went to work for the state of Missouri as a probation and parole officer. So that immediately put me in the realm of the real world at the age of 23. And so I, when I left Missouri, I worked at State Police for a couple of years, and now I'm at Children's Hospital working with Faith's mom, and I work in injury prevention. But my specialty area is intentional injury. How many of you know what intentional injury is? Have any ideas? You don't have to just raise it, just chill out. <laughs> yeah. Like cutting yourself, suicide, homicide, uh, the R word that we're not supposed to say. <laughs> um, and so my goal is to, you know, set up prevention programs around the state that work with people that would help them to kind of deal with these issues because we feel as though that every injury is preventable. It's just about education and teaching people. So I've got a little handout here for you ladies that I would like to see what your responses would be to this. Okay. No, I, they can answer out loud if they want to. Here, here you go. Okay. You saw, okay. <laughs> what condition runs in families and usually starts between the ages of 15 and 30 and is experienced by more than 20 million people? What do y'all think that would be? Something that's really common. Something that you could be considered like, oh, she's having a bad day. Depression. How many of you ex ever experienced this time when you were down and out about something? Yeah, look, I can too. Especially when you get over 30, you're like, oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> and let's see. How many drinks for males in one setting is considered binge drinking or for females? Do you know what binge drinking is, first of all? Keep on drinking. Keep on. Drinking, keep on. So how many would be for a guy, do you think? Look at you! Choo! 
Okay, and for girls, how many do you think? Four. It actually says four. But it really does depend upon your body weight and your size. You know, some people, you know, if you get a drink that's got, you know, 80% alcohol and you have just a little bit of something mixed in, that's going to be a big problem for you. But y'all aren't even supposed to be drinking at this point. So that's not anything that we're really, you know, we're hoping that you're not doing. Okay? Mm, let's see. Is binge drinking, like, what's the definition of binge drinking? I don't know like the formal definition of it, but from you know reports that I've seen and things that I've read, it's like when someone just continues to drink more than it would be like more than eight drinks. Time. Yeah, okay. exactly. You know, and and you can end up with alcohol poisoning, end up in the hospital, or even die from that because there's been a lot of kids that have <coughs> have went through that situation. Like you hear about a, a lot of college campuses where that's a part of their initiation into some of these sororities or fraternities. And it's dangerous when you get out there. So you have to remember these things, okay? Okay, let me see. Okay, here's a question for you. Teens and young adults who do not get enough sleep are at risk for automobile crashes, poor grades, performance in school, depressed moods, and problems with peer and adult relationships. Do you think that's true or false? True. You're all so quiet, so quiet. Okay, hit the next one, Lenore. Let me see. Okay. Now, how many of you are graduating? Well, we're, we're all in 11th grade. 11th grade. So this, this is great anyway. Now, this is know. the perfect time because you can start thinking about these things. Like when you go to, you're going to go to college, or you're going to go get a job, work part-time, go to school, you're going to move out, or stay at home with your parents. Those are all the options you have once you graduate from high school. Okay, you can go into the next one. Okay, and if you're going to college, so y'all have one more year before you go out and you decide if you're going to go to college or whatever. But how many of you are thinking about colleges or looking at colleges now? Mm -hmm. Okay, have you visited this college yet? No. You can, you can, huh? <laughs> well, this is, be visiting the college? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You kind of yeah, got an idea. I went to ASU in Hebrew. Okay, got your shirt. Events and stuff that are okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's good. But the things that we, when you go to college, visit the campus prior to actually going up there, to actually moving into your dorm and stuff. Know where your classes are located. Kind of walk around and have an idea of where things are located on the campus. Know where the emergency phones are. Do you, all, do you know what emergency phones are? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, there's this big signs. Big, they have a big thing with a flashing light on it most of the time, and you can dial, like, campus police, or sometimes you can even dial just regular telephone numbers. And keep your cell phone charged at all times. How many of you have cell phones? Okay, <laughs> do, does your mom ever tell you, I've been calling you all day and I can't reach you? I told my mom that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, good example. So, okay. Where well, have you been? <laughs> well, see, I experience this a lot because I have an 18-year-old son who's going to go to college this fall. So I'm experiencing what a lot of parents are going through at this time. And he has a cell phone, and I'm like, why am I paying your cell phone bill if I can never reach you? So keep your cell phone charged at all times, because you don't know when you may have to call for help, okay? And travel in groups when going out at night. How many of you, like, will leave the house at maybe 6 o'clock and walk to your friend's house or whatever, and then by 8 o'clock you're walking back in the dark alone? How many of you would do that? <laughs> Look, yeah, see, we can say that because when we were younger, we didn't have the problems that are prevalent today. I'm sure they existed, but they weren't as, you know, you know we didn't know about it.